Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on a highly requested gun from my personal collection that I have featured in videos in the past. This is my UMP9 clone built on a Tom Bostic Tommy Built TMP receiver. I assembled and built this gun all myself from every part that I could buy and which by the way I will give a complete parts list at the end of this video if you are curious what I put on this particular firearm. So before we get into the range reports and my thoughts on this gun, I personally want to thank all of my patrons as I always mention in every video. YouTube has demonetized my channel. I am part of the great YouTube gun channel purge. They're trying to get us to stop making content and my Patreon support me and keep the lights on around here enabling me to continue making this content. I also want to thank my primary sponsor Brownworks. I know that I've talked about them in the past. It is a small American company based in Maryland. Mark over there does an amazing job producing a complete line of custom wood grips for a large variety of firearms. As I always tell you and show in the pictures, he can make a wide variety of grips from a wide variety of exotic woods and materials. They can put any type of color or finish and specialty logo on those grips. He can customize your gun to be so special and mean so much to you and make it like nothing else. I really recommend you guys go over there and check out Brownworks. I cannot thank him enough for his sponsorship of my channel and providing all of the ammunition for these range reports. So please, as I mentioned, go and give Brownworks a look. I do not think you will be disappointed. And if you get a chance to talk to Mark, please personally thank him for supporting the channel. So with that said, let's talk about this particular gun. Now, obviously this is a UMP clone. Now I do have a lot of HK parts on it, but I also have to build this up from a lot of American parts. And I'll talk about, that's one of the things about this gun I don't like, part availability. But if you guys don't know what the HK UMP is, I believe it stands for generally the Universal Machine Pistol. It was designed in the 1990s and it was supposed to be the successor to the HK MP5. So this was originally designed as a submachine gun. Now the gun you see in front of you is semi-automatic only and it is a registered SBR. So I know sometimes people in the comments will say, that's an illegal gun, you can't have that. It is registered with the ATF as a short barreled rifle. So you don't have to put that in the comments. Now, as I said, the UMP was supposed to be the spiritual successor. HK tried to design a gun that was cheaper to manufacture, cheaper to mass produce, and of course the end users who was mainly going to be military and police, the availability of guns that they could afford in larger numbers that was supposed to be just as reliable and easier to work on. So their armors didn't have to be as involved in keeping and maintaining all of the guns in tip top shape. And the gun that HK produced was really quite innovative. But if you're an HK purist and have ever shot an MP5, you can understand why a lot of people say the UMP just doesn't match up. It is a more simple gun. It is made of a lot more polymer. You don't have as many options. The aftermarket for these things is quite limited. But because of that, it just didn't do as well as the MP5. And while HK still makes, of course, the UMP, they have always made the MP5 as well, side by side with this. So I know that some departments and some militaries want a gun like this, because with a polymer gun, you don't have to worry about things like corrosion. Also, the mechanism in this is a lot more simple. This is a straight blowback gun, where of course the MP5 is a delayed roller system. It's just more simple to build easier to manufacture, easier to maintain. It's a more simple gun that's supposed to be lighter weight and more user serviceable. But when it comes to the civilian market, most people can't get one of these. The closest thing you can get 
is the USC. Essentially a gun that kind of looks like this with a 16 inch barrel, a completely different stock, and it's just not quite the same. And HK only imports them in 45. So what a lot of people will do trying to emulate a real UMP is they buy the USC, and which by the way, I have done, and I have a whole series here on my YouTube channel about that. They will buy that USC, they'll send it off to Tom Bostic, who is the magician of anything Polymer HK. He can fuse on a real UMP rear to these receivers because the USC doesn't actually have this type of receiver end. This actually, because it's made in the US, is to HK spec, so it does have the proper pin. But the USC has a completely different system. And if you want it to look like this, you have to find a demilled UMP receiver and it has to be fused on. So what ends up happening is you have a lot of people that invest a lot of money to try to get a gun like a UMP that's not quite a UMP. And I do have to say, having a USC to UMP conversion done by Tom Bostic, it can get pretty close if you're willing to spend the money. But what I wanted, besides one chambered in 45, I wanted one chambered in 9. After all, the MP5 is predominantly chambered in 9mm. The UMP often is found in 45, but I like 9mm in my subguns and SBRs. So I wanted to build one from the ground up. And so I bought a TMP stripped receiver and I bought all of the components in this gun to chamber it in 9mm, which by the way is another advantage of the UMP. It can be chambered in 45, 40, and 9mm simply by changing the magazine, the bolt, and the barrel, and that's it. So there's a huge advantage to this depending on what a particular military or police would want their guns chambered in over the MP5, which is more expensive to rechamber. So a lot of people will spend a lot of money, as I mentioned, trying to do that conversion. I just wanted to make a UMP9 clone. Now, as I said, I'll go over the parts list. I do have a lot of HK parts on this, but the receiver itself is made by Tom Bostic in Florida. It's a Tommy built receiver. It's all to HK spec, but it can only accept a semi-automatic bolt. So let's talk about the things about this gun that I like and don't like. So as I've already alluded to, the thing I like most about this gun is that it is cool and rare. If you have one of these conversions or you build one from the ground up like this, no one else is going to have them. Well, I say no one else, but when you go to the range, you're not going to see many people shooting a UMP or a UMP clone. You do get a lot of looks. I do love the fact that this gun is more simple than an MP5. Now, as I said, the road delayed system is brilliant, but when it really comes to manufacture and building, this is such a simple gun. In fact, I'm going to do a field strip video of this gun and put it on Rumble. I actually do field strip videos of every gun that I review here on the channel now and put them over on Rumble. I can't put them on YouTube because YouTube doesn't like us disassembling guns. But if you want to see how simple this gun is, go over to my Rumble channel and check out that field strip. As I've also mentioned, the TMP receivers already come HK spec. You don't have to worry about any type of fusing. It's a one-piece receiver. You don't have to worry about the frame cracking like you do on some of the other conversions and people will complain about this. So this gun would be rated for duty use where the conversions are not. And then finally, this is a really lightweight gun. It's a little bit bigger than most pistol caliber carbines, but because it's mainly plastic, well, it's pretty darn light. So let's talk about the things that I'm not really a big fan of. Well, as I just said, this gun is made of a lot of polymer. Well, it honestly feels a little bit like a toy. It's just too plasticky. And I know for some people, they're not gonna like that. There's something about it when you hold an MP5 and then hold a UMP in your hand, you definitely feel the difference. Now, when it comes to HK or this particular design, it is high quality. And the fact it's made of polymer, I don't think detracts away from its function. But it does give you that perception. And as some people say, perception is reality. Also, this gun is way more utilitarian than the MP5. An MP5 is a sexy gun. It's like a Corvette or a sports car or a Porsche. The UMP, I kind of look at it like one of those police interceptor cruisers. 
it looks like a pretty plain Jane car, but it's souped up under the hood. And it has some things on it that really make it look tactical, but it's just not sleek and sexy like a sports car is. Now, some people are gonna like that, and some people don't. For me, it might be a little bit on the utilitarian side, but I think there's something about it too that does kind of make it cool, but that's all just gonna be personal preference. As I said, some people are gonna love that, and some people people are not. Another thing about this gun that I wish that they could upgrade is the sights. The diopter sights on the MP5 are really spectacular. This just has a notch or a ghost ring in the back. You can adjust it with some tools for windage and elevation. And the front blade sight is kind of big and thick. It is made of polymer. And I don't think it is very inducive to having a very good sight picture. That is a very wide blade. And whether or not you buy the aftermarket US made ones or the HK one, which is what this one is, that blade is just kind of big. You don't really feel like you're gonna shoot this gun very accurate. I don't think you get a very good sight picture using iron sights. And that's why a lot of people will run some type of optic on these. And last but not least, if you build one of these, you're going to discover the other thing. And I think the biggest attraction away from this gun, parts availability, especially if you're looking for German HK parts. I got a few on this, but you end up having to really go to US manufacturers. And there's nothing wrong with those US manufacturers, especially when it comes to the quality. But if you're a collector and really wanna go as authentic as possible, many parts on these guns, like barrels, especially if you wanna go with a 40 or a nine millimeter, well, you gotta find somebody that has a demilled gun and buy what could be possibly a very shot out barrel. Finding stock parts from HK from Germany is quite difficult and quite expensive. And even the US made parts for this gun are quite expensive. So even for a very, very simplistic gun made out of a lot of polymer to own, maintain, or build one of these, it's gonna cost you. And that's one of the downsides to it. But once it's together, man, it is a cool gun and no one else has one. So if you like expensive guns, well, you gotta have a UMP. So with all of that said, let's go to the first shots. I've owned this thing for some time and I haven't gotten it to the range. I have just been so busy. So I'm gonna set the target out at 10 yards, load up this magazine, two 20, 25 rounds, and I'm gonna put its first shots through it. I'm curious to see how it's gonna do. So I'm pretty happy with that first grouping. It might be a little bit high, and after shooting that, I realized, oops, I forgot the little tool to adjust the sights. I think it's just a little Allen wrench, but I left that at home. So I just need to make sure that all the future shooting, I shoot a little bit lower than where I'm really aiming. Now, I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the recoil of this. As you guys know, I do have one of those USC to UMP conversions chambered in 45, and it has a little bit of a thud recoil. This is way closer to an MP5. It's not as smooth as an MP5, but it feels great in the shoulder. It's one of the reasons why when it comes to pistol caliber carbines, I do prefer nine millimeter over all of the rest. And as you also saw, I had some type of failure to fire. I'm not sure if it was a light primer strike. I did pick up the cartridge after shooting that and it did not have a dent in it. So I'm not really sure what happened there, but I am a little bit concerned because I wanna make sure this thing is running right because I built this from a number of different parts. So I'm just gonna run it again and see if the reliability gets any better.
All right, so maybe it's breaking in a little bit. It ran just fine. You also saw that I tried the ghost ring sight. It does usually have a little notch in the back, but you can flip it up for a ghost ring. One of the complaints about this ghost ring is that it sits higher than the wings that are supposed to protect it. Some people have thought that was kind of a weird uh, design choice. So, we're now going to try the accuracy portion of this range report. I always like to put the target out at twice the distance, and that's what I'm going to do now. Now, this gun is not known as being a tack driver, but you should still get pretty darn good groups at 20, 25, even probably out to 50 yards with no problem. So, on the silhouette target, I'm going to go for both the center mass and the head, kind of alternating between the two, and see what type of groups that I can get. All right, so the groups opened up just a little bit. I was expecting that, and that I think has a lot to do with the thickness of that front sight, which I have already talked about. You also saw I had another click without a boom. And upon examining the extracted cartridge, it did not have a primer strike, but it did have a little mark around the rim. And so what I think is happening here is as the round is feeding out of the magazine and going into the chamber, the extractor on this might be a little bit too short strong right now and so the extractor is not going all the way around the case and therefore when it comes to firing the firing pin is not able to hit the primer it's still going into the chamber but the gun is still able to fire a little bit out of battery. Now, one of the things that anybody that converts one of these lower receivers, and this is a real HK FBI lower, so it only has two positions for safe and semi, is in the UMP design, it does use the auto sear and the little lever that goes up that's actuated by the bolt to make sure the gun is fully in battery so it cannot fire out of battery and cause a potential hazard. But because the ATF rules that, as being too easily convertible to a machine gun, that part has to be removed and all of that area inside of the front of the receiver has to be filled in. And so that's what I had Tom Bostic do. So it is a legal two position lower that has been converted to semi-automatic only. But because of that, you get rid of that safety feature. And I think that's why the hammer is falling, but it is not hitting the primer. So I think over time, the extractor is gonna wear in a little bit, and I think we're gonna get rid of this issue. Okay, so now is the time that I think we've all been waiting for. This is supposed to be a submachine gun. Yeah, it's only semi-automatic only, but it wants to run fast. So, here are the obligatory mag dumps. All right, so I can shoot this thing pretty fast, but not as fast as I would like. In semi-automatic mode, these guns have a duty trigger. They're a little bit plasticky, they're a little bit spongy, so you just can't run them as fast. And obviously, if this was a real machine gun, you'd wanna put that in the third position and have some fun with the giggle switch, but I can't. So I just have to get used to shooting that duty trigger kind of fast. It's fast enough for me, and of course, mag dumps are always fun in an awesome gun like this. 
So now I want to give my wife Becky a shot. She absolutely loves the MP5 and we recently took out my MP5 clone as well and she had a great time saying I want one in pink. But I'm curious what she's going to think about this. As I mentioned before, the MP5 is kind of like a Corvette or a Cadillac. And this thing is more like a big old sedan with a big engine in it. So I'm curious if she's going to like it as much and what she's going to think about the recoil. So she said she had a great time. She was really impressed with how light the gun is. She said it felt great in the hand and was really ergonomic. She liked it. She says it's not as nice as the MP5, but it's pretty darn close. So I'm going to say she gave this her stamp of approval. All right, so the last shooting portion of this range report, I'm going to do some type of defensive use. I know I'm not really putting this gun through its paces. I'm not torture testing it, but I am going to try to do some double taps and go between two different targets as fast as I possibly can. Of course, this is a tactical weapon that can be used by entry teams and SWAT teams, and I think that's kind of the role that this gun would have. Now, I'm not an expert marksman. I'm just going to try to go between these two shots. I don't know, put 10 or 15 rounds between them, and and see what happens. All right, so this is obviously a very versatile and tactical weapon. It runs like you would expect, and I understand why many SWAT teams around the world use this as their preferred submachine gun. It's just perfect for what it's designed for. It's not the perfect civilian weapon, but when you don't have to worry about keeping a gun and its collectability and you're just a police agency or a military and you're just looking for a cheap submachine gun that works by a reputable company, I can see why they go for the UMP. So now getting to shoot this gun that I personally built, what are my final thoughts? Well, obviously I am emotionally and financially invested in the success of this firearm. And I do have to say, I did have a few hiccups when it came to those failure to fires, and I think the gun just has to be broken in. But overall, I'm really impressed with how it ran. Maybe I actually know how to assemble guns, and this is my first time I ever assembled a UMP. I just tried to figure it out. I kind of reverse engineered the other UMP that I have and just built this one up and made a parts list and put it together. And I am really happy with how this thing turns out. And I'm gonna tell you, this thing is awesome chambered and 9mm. You definitely feel a big difference in recoil between this and the 45. I've never shot one in 40. I have a friend who's an FFL who has a real submachine gun chambered in 40, so who knows, maybe one day I'll get to shoot that and I'll be able to compare and contrast. But I gotta say, this gun runs great in 9mm and I don't understand why it's not more popular 
in 9mm. For me, it's just the way to go with any pistol caliber carbine or submachine gun. It's just the preferred caliber for me. And I have to say, the fit, finish, and function of this gun is great. Tom Bostic, who built the receiver, did an outstanding job. It looks like it is a factory HK. And all the parts that I bought for it from different manufacturers fit on it perfectly. I didn't have to do any type of gunsmithing or adjustments to any part. Everything fits tight, and it definitely does look the part. So, on my star system, how would I rate the TMP HK UMP clone chambered in 9mm, personally assembled and built by me? Well, I'm only going to give it 4 out of 5 stars, and here's why. I'm spoiled by the MP5. The MP5 honestly is the better gun, okay? It's the more complex gun, and it's the sexier gun. And it has that Cadillac recoil. This doesn't have that. It is definitely cool. No one else has it. It just has that special factor. It runs great. It's neat. But four out of five stars. It just can't compare to the MP5. HK got it right back in the 60s. But this does offer a modern solution for militaries and police. And if you're like me, someone that is willing to spend a lot of money to build something like this, I think it has some purpose as a personal defense weapon or an awesome range toy. So four out of five stars for the TMP9 HK UNP clone. So there you go. That's my thoughts on this, the range report. And I know some of you are going to ask, what parts are on this. So if you want to stick around, I'm going to adjust the camera, put this on the workbench, and I'll try to go over every part, if I can remember it, what it is and where I got it. All right, so here's the UMP clone. Let's start from the front here. We have a Michaels machine 9mm barrel that has the three lug system and is threaded one half by 28. The receiver, as I told you, is a TMP receiver made by Tom Bosick at Tommy Built. The rail system that I have on this I purchased from HK Parts. It is a lightweight kind of vented system and it has the extension on the top. As I said, it's theirs, not the original German HK. This is also an HK Parts stubby HK style vertical foregrip. On my other UMP, I have the full size. I wanted to go with a shorter one because the magazine on the 9mm versions of these are curved a little bit and the full size would come down just a little bit too far. The magazines that I run in this are both going to be US made and German made. The US ones are very affordable and the German ones are very expensive. The lower receiver that I have on this, I actually purchased from HK Parts. This is an authentic UMP lower. It is a two position lower, it's sometimes called the FBI lower. I sent this off to Tom Bosick. As I said earlier in the range report, I had the auto seer removed and the area filled in as per ATF spec. And he also converted the trigger to semi-automatic only. So when it comes to the bolt, I bought this from Michael's machine as well as well as the extractor and all the parts that go on the bolt. There's about five or six different parts. I had to buy them from a number of different places because everybody had them out of stock here or there. I just had to make sure I knew what parts I needed. The stock on the back is an authentic HK UMP stock. The recoil spring in here is going to be a US made one. The German ones, it is a recoil spring that is all one piece. This one you can actually take it off and replace the recoil spring if it comes off. I actually think it's a little bit better design. The rear sight is a real UMP sight. The front sight is a real HK UMP sight as well. I replaced both of those. When you buy this receiver, you do get sights from Tom Bostic, but they're a US made version of them and I don't think they're just as high quality and these are really easy to replace and I wanted to have the authentic German parts. And I think really that's all there is on this gun. As I said, if you're interested in seeing a field stripping of this gun, go over to my Rumble channel and check it out there. So there you go. That is my range report and parts list for my TMP UMP clone. So let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thanks for watching.